In this video, we're going to discuss the finite element method P1 in dimension 1. Let me start with the interval 0, 1 and a mesh on this interval. So the mesh will be x0 to xj plus 1, therefore we have j plus 2 uh, nodes and j nodes inside our interval 0, 1. Now, let me define the finite elements P1. So we're going to define this space HH of all functions V that are continuous and such that the restriction of that function to the interval xj, xj plus 1 is in P1. In other words, it is a polynomial of degree 1 or smaller. Then uh, I will also define the subspace of HH, which will be all of the functions that are in HH that on top of this will vanish on the boundary, meaning at both ends. In other words, V of 0 is equal to 0 and V of 1 is equal to 0. So let me give you an example. Here you have a function in HH. So as you can see, on in between two points of the mesh, and that basically is a polynomial of degree 1. And if you want to be in H, 0H, then on top of this, you have to be equal to 0 at 0 and at 1. Now, let me give a lemma here, which is HH is a linear subspace of H10 of dimension j plus 2. And H0H is a linear subspace of H1001 of dimension j. Now, I will give you a basis of both HH and H0H. So, uh, if you look at HH, and obviously I'm going to have to give you j plus 2 uh, vectors, functions, uh, with which I can uh, basically build every functions of HH by linear combination. What I'm going to choose is this hat function. So here is the first one, phi 1. Phi 1 starts at 0. It goes up uh, to, to 1 when, when, when we're at x1, which is h. So basically what I'm saying is phi 1 of h is 1. Therefore, the slope here of that function is 1 over h. And then it goes back down with a slope negative 1 over h, and which is 0 when you reach x2, which is basically 2h. Uh, and then after that, it will be equal to 0. Okay, so that's phi 1. Phi 2 will be the same function somehow, but shifted by h. So it is equal to 0 all the way to x1. Then it goes up with the slope 1 over h, and which is 1 at x2. And then it goes down uh, from x2 all the way to x3 with obviously a slope which is minus 1 over h. And we can keep going this way, so I can compute, I can, I can define phi 1 to phi j, and at both ends I can define phi 0 simply as this, uh, this hat function, but only half of hat, and phi j plus 1 also half of the hat. Uh, so what I'm saying is that we can define this basis here. So phi j is in HH, and what we have is that phi j of xi is the chronic course, the chronic course symbol uh, delta ij. It has nothing to do with the Dirac uh, uh, distribution. It's the chronic course symbol, which means that delta ij is 1 if i is equal to j, and 0 if i is different from j. All right? Okay, now what I'm saying is that this, and you can verify it quite easily, that uh, phi j is a basis of hh uh, if I consider uh, the, the, all the indices from 0 to j plus 1, so the j plus 2 elements will uh, be a basis of hh. And if I just consider uh, the elements from 1 to j, then that will be a basis of h0h. Okay. Well, I think we have everything that we need now to solve a problem of dimension 1 with the finite element method. So what we will consider is minus u second equal f in 0, 1, and we'll consider the homogeneous directly boundary condition u of 0 equals u of 1 equals 0. Well, obviously, uh, we 
can actually compute that, uh, that, 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 that solution uh, if we know the entire derivatives of f and the entire derivatives of the... But I mean, let, let's, just, let's just consider this at this point simply uh, as, a, as a problem we want to solve numerically. Okay? So, what I'm saying is that uh, we established the virtual formulation for this. So, go back to chapter 4 if you have a problem with this. The virtual formulation will be given here. So, that's the integral over 0, 1 of u prime phi prime equals the integral of f phi over 0, 1. Now, we have defined a bilinear form A, which is A of uv equals the integral of u prime v prime. And that was already proven to be coercive and continuous, thanks to Poincaré constant, um, on H10. Uh, also, we have defined L, which is which was proven to be continu continuous linear form on zero one H zero one H one zero of zero one. Now, we consider a uniform mesh just to simplify things, uh, and we will consider J, uh, the number of uh, of nodes inside of our of interval. H will be one over J plus one. We are going to consider the space H0H, which is included in H10 of 01, with the basis that we just defined earlier with the hat functions, and the virtual approximation UH in HH, such that for all the H in the HH, AUHVH is L of VH. Now, I will need to build this uh, rigidity matrix, so let's AH be a phi i phi j, uh, as, as, we, as we defined uh, earlier in the previous videos. So, A is known, I mean, I know what is the bilinear form, it's the integral between 0 and 1 of the, the product of the derivative of the components, right? I mean, of the derivative of the functions, of the, the, what I'm plugging in, in A. So, that's the integral between 0 and 1 of phi i prime phi j prime, okay? Now, uh, let's compute this. So, uh, there are several possibilities, uh, but uh, before we actually look at every possibility, I just would like to emphasize that the support of phi j is the interval x j minus 1, x j plus 1, right? So, hat function, and between uh, x j minus 1 and x j plus 1, it's, it's not 0, but before x j minus 1, 0, and after x j plus 1, it is 0. All right? Okay, now if i is equal to j, what happens? Well, I need to compute the integral between 0 and 1 of phi prime i, phi prime i, since j is equal to i. So it's basically the square of phi prime of phi i prime. Now, remember, uh, what you have is, uh, no matter what phi i you choose, uh, the, the derivative will be, the, the, on, 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 on the, the first part will be 1 over h, and on, on the second part, when it's going down, it's minus 1 over h. So, uh, when, when you square this, no matter what, you can have 1 over square, 1 over h square, and obviously, on the support, uh, and you have an indicator function here, uh, on the support, x minus 1, x plus 1. So what you end up with is the integral between x minus x i minus one x i plus one of one over h square, which is x i plus one minus x i minus one times one over h square. But obviously x i plus one minus x i minus one will be two h. So what you end up with is two over h. Okay, so that is the term you will have on the diagonal of the matrix. Now, if i minus 1 is uh, 1 or minus 1, in other words, if i, if you look at phi i and the one after that, or phi i and the one before that, uh, then what do you have? Well, obviously, the definition is this, uh, the integral between 0 and 1 of phi i prime, phi j prime. So, you can, just to understand how things work, you can look at phi 1 and phi 2, uh, and see, and, and basically, uh, this is going to be what's going on between phi i and phi i plus one. Um, so, so what do you have? 
uh, well, here's what you have. I mean, you have 1 over h times uh, basically 0. Then you have a minus 1 over h times 1 over h. Then you have minus 1 over h times 0. That's basically what you, what you have. So when I write it this way, it makes maybe more sense. It's minus 1 over h squared times the product of the indicative functions. And what you end up with, obviously, is going to be minus 1 over h. So this is what you have in this case. Third case, i minus j is the absolute value greater than 2. That really means that your two hat functions don't share any support, therefore their the product of their derivative well it will be zero, so there is no question that will be that that's basically is uh, a h i j. So eventually, what you get is the matrix a h is simply this matrix with two on the diagonal, and then they get negative one, and they get negative one, and they get zeros everywhere else. Now, what about v h? Well, bh is the integral between 0 and 1 of f times phi i. Well, that can just be computed by, 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 by actually approximation. You can just approximate. There are a lot of numerical ways to integrate this function. Uh, here are a few. You can basically do the Riemann sum. Um, and, you know, if you, if you don't do this thing, just stop the video and look at it. I'm going to go really quickly. Here is the left Riemann sum. Uh, that is written here. You can do the right Riemann sum, you can do the midpoint rule, you can do the trapezoid rule, you can do the Simpson rule, you can do uh, the gross Kronrod, which is actually a, a very efficient method to compute this BH, but that's not a problem. You can actually approximate this integral pretty easily. Now, the interpolation operator P1 is going to be the linear mapping RH that maps v to the sum of vxi, I mean vxj, phi j. And I'm going to sum this between 0 and j plus 1. And what I'm saying is that uh, if u is in h10 and uh is in h0h, and there are solutions to vf and vfh, which are the virtual formulation and the virtual formulations posed in the, the subspace of dimension nh, then the finite element method P1 will converge, which means that the limit of u minus uh in h1 will go to zero. And furthermore, there exists a c such that u in h2 implies the norm in h1 of u minus uh is smaller than ch f norm f, the norm of f in L2. Now, to prove this theorem, you basically use two lemmas. The first one is the existence of a constant c, such that for all v in h2, you have this inequality, these inequalities. And the second lemma is the existence of a constant c, such that uh, for all v in h1, you have these inequalities, and you have this limit uh, when h goes to zero. All right, now, now that we have this, let's actually uh, try the method with a given f. So I'm going to use f equal 1, uh, so I'm really going to, to, to solve this problem, minus u second equals 1 in 0, 1, u of 0 equals u of 1 equals 0, which can really be uh, computed by hand. Obviously, you can find the antiderivative of 1 pretty easily, uh, and then you can find the second uh, antiderivative, just the constants, so that u of 0 equals u of 1 equals 0. Obviously, you will find this solution. Uh, so, normally, no one would compute this numerically. The reason why we're going to do this on this problem is because this will give us a way to compare our solution computed numerically and the solution we know to be the exact solution uh, in this case. But again, obviously, uh, in, in most of the cases, we don't know the exact solution. All right, so let's, um, let's actually take uh, j equal to 10. And let's try the finite element method. So let's go back to Python, and I'm going to uh, well call this uh, uh, NumPy again. And since we are going to uh, also use some 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 plots, uh, I'm going to use I'm going to call matplotlib as well, uh, and and I'm doing j equals uh, 10. Uh, I will uh, compute h, uh, and obviously I can I can I can, I can verify the, the, the value 
for, for, for h and here is a, here's the value. And now what I'm going to do is to, to enter the matrix. And that's a terrible way to enter the matrix. And obviously I should, I should, I should write this depending on J, but just, just for the sake of not complicating things, uh, I'm just actually putting, put, putting in the matrix by itself. And same thing, I'm putting in B, which is a terrible way to, to, to enter uh, things here, but I'm, I'm still doing it. So here is A and here is, so that's, that's the A and that's, that's B. Uh, which is uh, written here. All right, so uh, I have A, I have B, and what I need to do now is to compute uh, UH. So I need to solve A U equals B. So here is the, 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 the comment for it. And I'm going to print the, the value. So that is all the components of U uh, in, in between, uh, um, you know, inside of my interval. Okay, and now here is the plot of my function. I really should add to it zero and zero. I, don't, I mean, uh, obviously, you could add to your to your uh, to your to your solution uh, that you have u of zero uh, and u of one is equal to. So, so here is the solution, and that of course is uh, a parabola as we were expecting. We just saw the the function a few a few seconds ago, uh, and that is really consistent with what we were expecting. So here is for solving this uh, partial differential equation, or actually ordinary differential equation since we are in dimension one, with the finite element method P1.